First, uh, apologies for the delay. It's uh, late even in the evening. But this is going to be a short uh, presentation. The title of this presentation is From Swaras to Ragas. It's intentionally very uh, loose so that we can interpret it whichever way we want. Shamukha Priya then went to Simendra Madhima and Dhammavati and finished in Vidhyamavati. Uh, there's a reason why I sang these two uh, sets of uh, ragas. Um, in our sequence of uh, leg dance, uh, just to do a quick you know, five minute recap, uh, when it comes to the series on ragas, we started, uh, we had a couple of sessions uh, on uh, Manakatta Ragas. 
So, what do we start with? We start with the Sapta Suras. Sarigama Padani. Familiar name, huh? So, we start with the Sapta Suras. And then we say, of the Sapta Suras, Sa and Pa are fixed. And Rigama uh, Dani, there are they, there are two flavors of each of those colors. Komal and Tibra, flat and sharp. Sarigriga Gama Mapa Dagani Nisa. Of course, if you sing all the, that's a chromatic scale, if you sing all the 12 uh, Swarasthanas, how do we get 12? Five Rigamadani, each of them having two variations, five times two, ten plus sa and part one. If you sing them in a succession, it's not going to sound melodious. Right? So we have from Sapta Swaras, we have uh, the, uh, you know, uh, twelve with the Swarasthanas. And then we took the concept further and we said, okay, of that, four of these twelve Swarasthanas, they play a dual role. Sari. That re also plays the role of Saga Sari Ga. So Re and Ga. The same note plays a, acts as a Re as well as a Ga. Sari Saga Sari. That also acts as Re and Ga. Similarly, the and Ni. So Four out of the twelve notes play; uh, they are dual hatted. So we get sixteen swaras. And then of the sixteen, we started with the Madhakarta scheme. We we looked at how you can come up with all the combinations. Uh, we took the four riga notes and then came up with six combinations: one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, three, four. And we did that. Whatever we did for ri and ga, we did the same thing for da and ni. 6 times 632 and the two Madhimams. We switched the Madhimams and we got the 72 Malagattas. And then we also went through the nomenclature, Katapilati nomenclature. Then we had a few sessions about the Janya Ragas. Janya Ragas, we said the simplest way to derive a Janya Raga is to omit notes, Varjya uh, Ragas where you can drop one or two or even three notes and you can do it in Arohana and Avarohana. Arohana of course is the path between from Losa to Haisa and Avarohana is the return path. And then um, we, we, we looked at uh, samples and then uh, we, we came up with uh, term, terms like Audava, Audava, Sharava, Sharava, you know, 5 and 6 and 6 and 6 and 5 and 5 and 5 and 7 and so on and so forth. And then that then we took a one big deviation we said okay it doesn't have to be monotonically it's called krama you can you can break the krama that is you can break the sequence and have zigzag patterns then that becomes a vakrara so the moment you introduce that that concept basically makes the number of ragas theoretically infinite if you didn't have that, then you can enumerate the total number of possible Janya Ragas. So, uh, we, we gave examples, uh, I believe uh, we took uh, one Nalakarta Ragam, like Karahara Priya, we looked at the Janya Ragas, then we looked at uh, Pratimadima Ragas, and then looked at some of the Janya Ragas there. And then one thing that we uh, came across is, the Melakarta Ragas and the Janya Ragas are there purely for our understanding. That doesn't imply that the Melakarta Ragas uh, create or you know the Janya Ragas are derived from the Melakarta Ragas. Historically, the term Janaka Raga is used for Melakarta Ragas. Janaka means parent, but that's not how the Ragas came about. The, this is purely for understanding. So one. Uh, term that we used was the, the idea of a term and uh, with, even without naming the ragas we said there are the 72 combinations give rise to 72 plans and these Janya ragas belong to the clan and the, and the Madhakarta raga is like the head of the clan so it's not like the parent-child relationship it's not like derivation 
And then uh, we also saw examples where some ragas cannot be definitively put in some plants. You know, atana, you know, you cannot necessarily say it belongs to this clan or that clan. So you have a whole bunch of ragas like that. And uh, many of the ragas uh, that uh, have that uh, characteristic, they are also called Bhashan ragas because they allow, even if there is one swaram, Riga, Mata, or Ni, where both the Komal and Tivra, I am using the word Komal and Tivra, although it's a typical Hindustani term, to show lower and higher. Because we cannot say Shuddha. Because in case of, uh, uh, then the other part is, depending on the note, it's different. Uh, for example, uh, Suddha Nishadam happens to be nothing but Chatushruti Daivata. So, I want to use Koval and Trivira basically to say flatter and sharper. So, if you have at least one note, one swaram, one note, where both the lower frequency and the higher frequency, Koval and the Trivira version, appear in the same raga, we call it Varshangra. So, we went through a few sessions where we basically looked at uh, ragas purely in terms of the, the swarams that the ragas take and the sequence in which the swarams occur in the purely by Aurohanam or Navarohanam. But is that sufficient to define a raga? Okay. So, the, the, what I hope to cover here in this session is from the, from the swaras, from the, we, we started with the absolute swaras and we went through some exercise to come up with some basic definition of a, of a raga. So we went from swaras to ragas, but we have more ways to go before we actually come up with the full uh, personality of the raga. And then I would like to take a very short detour. You know, one can argue that we should not even think in terms of ragas coming from swaras. It's not like, swaras are not like Lego blocks that we assemble to make different ragas. Okay, ragas as a, as a rasika, as a student, as a performer, even as a teacher, we should take raga as a complete entity. And the raga should be enjoyed, taught, performed, presented, as a, as a total entity, not uh, thought of in terms of swaras. That's that's one perspective, and uh, that's a very valuable perspective to have. However, from a, you know, although the ragas, we inherited the ragas from posterity. I mean, from from our ancestors, and then and then we we try to understand the ragas in terms of swaras. So, we have to have both the perspectives in mind where Raga as an entity which is not just made up of Swaras. Raga as an entity which has got its own complete completeness because you will have two Ragas with the same Swaras but they will be very different in terms of uh, the, the Bhava, in terms of the personality. So, uh, Raga as an independent concept should be kept in mind but you also want to see how we go from swaras to ragas. <clears throat> now, in addition to the arohanam, avarohanam, there are other aspects that define the contour of the raga. And I would say uh, these other characteristics, they also only attempt to define the raga. A raga is only fully defined when it is sung properly, when it manifests in beautiful compositions. Compositions basically give shape or the context to the raga. Uh, that said, there are various aspects above and beyond the Arohanam Avarohanam and which Mela, the a raga belongs to, that uh, define uh, a raga or describe a raga. That's called uh, a technical term for that, it's called Raga Lakshana. Lakshana is nothing but grammar, the grammar of a Raga. And there are 
over history they have talked about uh, uh, 10 lakshanas and uh, 13 lakshanas and uh, uh, if you look at professor samamurthy's book he took it to 72 and some of them you know are very way out there uh, he talks about the medicinal values of ragas and i'm not sure if it belongs in the raga lakshana but the the idea is basically they want to take a raga and then say what all can we say about the raga the characteristics of the raga so if you kind of uh, stick to we are we are not trying to completely define a raga here we are trying to say okay we have come this far in terms of uh, the 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 scale again there is no technical term for for nowadays we say arohana arohana is just the scale that doesn't make the raga there is more to a raga than the scale we say that but the scale itself i don't believe there is a technical term for scale in indian music maybe in the past they used the word grama uh, for collection of notes that was even before ragas the predecessor to raga is jati uh, the raga concept came much later so if you look at bharata's natya shastra which was written in second century bce uh, there is a reference to jati and then uh, the the embellishments of these jatis are called alankaras so roughly you can say jati became raga and alankara became gamakams and other other uh, other embellishments so let's look at some of these uh, aspects of raga lakshana the the every raga has swaras which not only are in addition to being part of the arohanam and avarohanam they also play uh, some of the swaras play a special role a grihaswara where a song